Hey everyone, welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson, and my lovely guest today is Miss Carrie Walker. Hey everybody. Formerly a co-host of The Joyride Show, and now involved in her new show called Alice Eats the Apple. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we, we always have these incredible deep dive conversations, and that's usually how these shows end up happening. We're like, we should really talk about that on the show. And then we get on the show and we totally forget what we were going to talk about. Well, we moved on. I mean, it just, <laughs> we just keep going. Kind of and evolves like, from there. Didn't we have something really important, like earth-changing? Yeah, didn't we have something really pivotal and profound to share? Anyway, I wanted to, first of all, have Carrie just go back briefly, because she has been on this incredibly accelerated path the last probably, th- what do you say, three years, maybe four years? Well, I think it was probably maybe three, six months to a year before Joyride, and Joyride was actually on my birthday, April 21st, 2016. So it's been a while, yeah. a little while. A little while. And so Joyride started, well, I'm going to let you tell the story, how your Joyride show started. Okay, so so I've always, not always, but when I was a younger child, I had experiences, and my grandfather passed away. He came to all of us, or at least three of us that I know of that night, and, and told us that he was going and that he loved us very much, and he would see us again. And so I was probably about seven, six or seven. I also had, a, it was his, I, I believe that these things come through lines um, and Uh, I can't say the word, familial lines. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather had this ability. His great-grandmother had this ability. She could remove things from your body. She just knew things. But but people didn't talk about it then. Right. It was just she's the one. People went to. People went to. They knew about her. And and I think that it was just something she did. I don't think she really paid it much attention and paid much attention to it. And so, anyway, so it's always sort of been in the background. But, um, and I grew up sailing so we never went to church and so I didn't now I look back I realize I didn't have to undo dogma mm-hmm. I mean I think there's enough of that just in the air mm-hmm. um and definitely. so what's that I said definitely yeah, yeah yeah so then so then we moved forward uh dream about a great grandmother died um and I the bowler hat man the man with the trench coat and a hat I saw him one night outside my window when I was a child Went back and asked my mother about that, and she said, "Yes, I remember you saying that because I was a little bit freaked out that there was a man around our house." And um, and other people have seen this. Mm-hmm. I've asked people interestingly, randomly. exactly, yeah. and 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 he is a guy, and, and and they try to paint him out as a scary thing. I never felt that way. I mean, it was startling to see someone outside your home, um, in the middle of the night. And I remember, so I had these two windows, my bed between the two windows, and my head and my feet would always get. Like, I always end up in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking down, and we lived in the country. The country? Yes, thank you. Thank you for finishing that word. And um, and there was a full moon, and we, so I could see. And I remember looking, like, waking up, and, I, and I've always had bad eyesight. How old I'm, were you? Seven, eight? Yeah, something like that. Eight, nine. And I remember looking down, and I see this man looking directly, like, dead in my eyes. You know, directly at me, and I just remember it's like, that's so unnerving. <laughs> and I just froze. Like if I freeze, he might not see me. Right. And and it was just it was just interesting, but it's always been in the back that of my mind. That stuck with you. It did. And so forward, you know, Charles, uh, my uh, husband, husband, when we started yeah. to date, said he was funny. He was like, "You're like this little witch, you know, like you love to concoct things, and you know, and and <laughs> and I just remember thinking, oh, I love that, you know. I mean, so I've always loved the alternative way um the alternative like maybe there's more to things maybe there's a deeper meaning maybe and I've always been accused of overthinking Mm. and I remember running energy with a girlfriend of mine when I was probably 13 we would sit and and not touch hands but like hold our hands above each other and I didn't know what that was I just remember thinking this is interesting yeah Yeah, I'm thinking I I, I'd forgotten this um but not really having an awareness of what that was. You're yeah. just like, this is cool. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. And so, and, and I'm, I, anyway, so there, there have been things throughout my life that I never really focused. And then, honestly, I had a girlfriend of mine that I grew up with that I was really close to who, early 20s, joined an ashram and kind of, we never saw her, like for 10 years, didn't see her again wow. and, and changed her name. And, and she's very, very much in the mainstream before that and just beautiful person. That's a radical shift. 
Well, it was, but the reason I bring it up is that it it scared me because I remember thinking, I want to have kids and get married, and and you know, you don't want to go off the grid for ten years. No, and and, and I thought that disappear in order to be spiritual. That's what you had to do. Like you had to go so far. It's, like, it's funny how we have these preconceived mm-hmm. ideas of what Box. spirituality looks like, what the journey looks like, what organized religion looks like, but really, there's such a huge. Gamut. I mean, it's really infinite, well, the, it's the ways you. you can find yourself. Right? Exactly it's really right. coming back to you, right? Well, I thought I couldn't shave my legs. I had to use crystal for, for deodorant. And I live in Houston. I could get pretty gross fast. And, you know, like I had really all these pre- and I was like, I like preconceived things, like- ideas. You're a designer. Uh-huh. You have, uh, you know, incredible taste. Yeah. We're, we're filming in Carrie's beautiful home. Well, if you ever watch any of my stuff, it's like I drag my stuff all around the house because it's like, wow, I think we want to do something else today. Anyway, so 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 then let's fast forward. Um, and I've always been intrigued, like I said, uh, with spirits and that type of thing, but I never really went into it because I've always, I was always afraid of it. I always thought that you know there are bad things out there, and I didn't know, and, and, and so I just really stayed away from all that. So then a girlfriend of mine died um, in 2013, I believe. I have no concept of time. Anyway, she very quickly passed away, and she had two young children. One was a good friend of my son's, one of my kids, and <clears throat> and so uh, so that happened. And then right around the same time, I had this little spot on my arm, which I tell everybody about this. Um, but it's a little tiny spot, and I have a girlfriend that's an on- oncological derm. So so that's what How she does. How perfect. Yeah melanoma skin cancers Mm -hmm. so she looked at she's like "Ah, it's fine it's fine and and i trust her very you know really and so i went to another doctor just to get the whole scan and just to kind of get the baseline of Mm -hmm. um because i did do i'm very pale and did a lot of sunburning Mm -hmm. and um that doctor's like nope i I agree something made me go back in um i called and they said the spot just opened up and so i synchronicity Mm -hmm. Went to the wrong doctor, even. Really? Uh, there were two doctors with the same name. Mm-hmm. Oh, my and so God. I went in, and I said, just take it off. I, I don't know what it is, and, and it looks like a, a freckle. It's fine, but I'm sure, but take it off. She calls me back. She's like, yeah, I could catch me- melanoma. And that's the one that spreads fairly quickly. Right. And we've had a couple friends pass away of that from from that. And it's, it was sort of interesting because mm-hmm. I found out I had it, but then I found out it was gone all at the same time because mm-hmm. it, it was contained. It hadn't spread. So that was eye opening. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think we're not wired to think that we die. You know, mm-hmm. none of us get out of here alive. And you have young children. So that was children. probably. And I just lost a girlfriend. And, right. and so, so all of these things kind of compiled, kind of came to this, this point, right? And oh, and it, I need to tell you too that my guides, I've always believed in having a team. Um, mm-hmm. And my, I, I knew uh, my guides came to me probably in my early 20s and said, Are you ready? Are you ready? And it was like, well, no. And, and I didn't know what that meant. And I, and I got on this. They asked me to get on a tram. And I got on the tram. And I'm like, ah, I can't do it. And so I, I got off. And, again, I was afraid. And, um, and I'll tell you why uh, when we get to that point. But what I, what I realized. So here we are, 2013. Friend passes away. Found out I had this. But it's fine. You know, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm sitting in the tub. And I said, and I told God, I said, okay, you put me here. I'm ready. Tell me what you want me to do. But I want to sign I'm not nuts. I mean, that's my caveat. My poor guys are like, we have to tell you 10 times before you actually believe something. And, and then uh, you're like, one more. Just just one more. Sign. No, I don't make that up. Is that <laughs> 15 real? signs later. You're like, no, but really, oh just, God, just I, one more. Did you see that? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> just one more sign. This. this is, no, this is, I found this the other day. <sighs> oh, that's so funny. If you're waiting for a sign, this is it. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think just a little friendly funny. reminder. So, <laughs> exactly. So I end up the next morning. I wake up and I've been in my home for at this point for probably seven years, and um, I've had my fiesta wear plates for ten years. What year was that that you had this experience? I think 2013. Wow. So it was 20, a while ago. Might be 2014. I don't remember. Anyway, anyway. It, right around. I know it was after 2012. And, um, mm-hmm. and so I look in my mirror, in my, in my cabinet, yeah. anyway, I look in my cabinet reflecting off of my plates with a light that's above. I mean, it's, it's a reflection mm-hmm. is a perfect, it's a one, two, three, four, five, five sided pyramid 
with a perfect eye. You can see the iris, you can see the pupil, and and That's I mean, so radical. It was cool. amazing. I'm like, I don't know what it means, but I think that might be my son. And and I'm like, Charles's mom was here, and I said, do you do you see that? <laughs> yes, I see it. And they change. I mean, I have one that looks like Saturn, one that looks, and I can't always make it happen. And I've played mm-hmm. with the lights. They just kind of show up on time. They do. They do. And 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 they don't show up for some people, which I find interesting. Like someone will be here. I'm like, yeah, you want to see my eye? And it's not there. It's gone. Yeah, so then I decided that I was coming out of the metaphysical closet. That's a huge step oh for then, all of us to take. That? It's like it's like you vacuum up anything you can get your hands yes, on. Yes, you're reading a million books, you're talking to people, you're watching shows, you're YouTubing. You're wearing things like, that say, I do yoga. You, know, <laughs> you do I'm yoga awake, all of a sudden? Yeah, oh yeah, I do yoga. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing against yoga. I no, like no. yoga. Well, but it's it's like you go on this self-discovery journey mm-hmm. all of a sudden you where you're just in full seeker mode. Well, you're like a sponge. You are. Anything, you are. And, and, but what I found, like there's something that's interesting. That, that, eh, it's too far out. And, and all my friends will attest, you can attest to this, that I, I will reach a point, and I know it's right before a big growth, like right before something, like a big breakthrough. I'm like, ah, oh, this, this shit's, I'm tired. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I've been through that several times with you. Yeah. We were like, Fuck. Fuck this! I'm not doing Fuck it. it. I don't know. I don't know why I'm God done. Me to do this. We're all crazy. <laughs> well, that is <laughs> that is a really big deal for me being not being crazy. But like, anyway, so so got the sign, took a couple mm-hmm. of Reiki classes, um, mm-hmm. and 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 I feel very strongly that when you are waking up. It's an opportunity to heal a lot of wounds, and that if oh my gosh, healing yes. doesn't take place, it's like an out of balance washer, you know, dishwasher, or not dishwasher, clothes washer, and yeah. it's like dum 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 dum, and yeah. and that's to get your attention. Well, and and I think a lot of times, yes, and when you're ready to clear something, they can come up, and it's not always easy. Clearing is the most uncomfortable experience ever. Well, first you have to see it. And this, these patterns and this right. behavior. And Which is hard enough. It is. It's looking at yourself, at your shit. Well, and I believe Just the way tough. it manifests, um, for somehow it's tied to ego. And your ego, um, I don't believe that you slay your ego. I don't believe that you get rid of ego. I don't ego think you can ever carry. fully get rid of your ego no. but you can tame it a little bit well I know, think maybe. I think what they're talking about is 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 I mean for me it is I'm a I am here to do God's work whatever that is whether it's picking up a can on the side of the street or it's helping a kid or it's helping someone or you know telling someone something I got through mindfulness whatever um, and it but it's not me I am it's coming through me and I think that I think right. it's it's when I'm a guru I'm a guru and this is what I do and you you know and and you hear these stories and this always just infuriates me when I hear which I guess I should look I that. think everybody is their own guru well, that, they, I don't even think teacher, I mean but, well I know but what I'm saying is every single person has their own answers and their own path and they need to trust themselves enough to follow that whatever that is we're not we're not trained that we're trained that you go to the expert people are in that hive mind it is which we need to break out of people that's a that's a very dangerous place to be where you are afraid to think for yourself honor your truth find your own path Mm -hmm. that's a ticket out well, but it's scary and it's easier to have somebody tell you what your path is. This is your path. No, that's your path and you're asking me to come along on your path. Exactly. And, and that is, and, and, and I think the way it, man, it manifests is when you see people that you think are, are these enlightened beings and they're, they're, they're telling people things. And, and There's so much pressure. Well, no, but my point is, is that then they come back and you, and, and you find out that they're actually raping people or they're actually, you know... Uh, doing these or they're saying all the right things and not doing their own inner work but i think but i think that goes back to not healing and i think that that is a that's an healing is the is the key when i don't think we're ever truly 100 percent there i mean maybe we it's an eternal process but once you start and you and you get more comfortable with being in the in the uncomfortable spaces those in, in kind of the fire sitting in the fire and processing and releasing those traumas or wounds or whatever you want to call it. I think as you go through the process over and over, it gets a little bit easier to transcend. And to see it. Well, recognizing it for sure, but actually transmuting it and mm-hmm. releasing it becomes easier and easier. Right. 
that in the beginning it's so hard because there's just so much resistance and we have such a different perspective around it. Mm -hmm. But as you go through the process, it's, it's like, you know, they always say it's like layers, right? You're peeling back layers, peeling back layers. The layers start to come off a little bit easier. Yeah, they start flaking. Yeah. Well, and I, I view it, I mean, I just had one that just came up, and you and I were together, mm -hmm. and, and it, it's like, a, for me, it's a spiral, and I come to the same place, and it's like, oh, fuck, I'm here again? You know, but you're there. You're so the been there. You're like, I just thought I, I was over this But there's a little issue. bit more. But you know, though. Always that it does feel lighter and it mm -hmm. does like it, and it clears a little bit faster mm -hmm. i think i mean that's been true for me i, I think it's know. true and i think it's i think part i think it's most of it, it it's sort of like a like it, the bat the battering ram it sits and it hits the door and mm -hmm. then the door just gets a little jigglier mm -hmm. and it opens easier it's like okay good i'm i'm in I'm and that out. spiral to me is time like time instead of being a linear you know we look at time as a linear um sequential se mm -hmm. sequential experience but really time is a spiral so the spiral Carrie's talking about is we're we are traveling through time we are spiraling and then we're hitting that same nexus point with a different experience or a different individual but it's the same core issue being triggered for us it's mm -hmm. like another opportunity for us to evolve well. or process or clear something and if we respond to it the same way guess what it's going to come back around, people. So we really need to just right. face it head on and clear it. And, 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 I think and it's going to come back in a more aggressive way. Yeah, it does. It gets louder. That's kind of what, what I've I, noticed. What I think happens is, uh, so I'm a very concrete, very contextual person. So mm -hmm. like I need, it's like, how do you clear it? And for me, it's you turn and you're like, okay, this sucks. Why am I feeling this way? Where am I seeing this? You know, where... Where did this come from? And what's this about for me? Exactly. Right? And then, and usually you can tie that back to either a situation or a feeling or a fear, usually. It's usually fear. It is almost it's always fear. It's always fear, actually. And, and anyway, so I, so that's, so I, hopping back on the carry train, I, I had a, um, so I have surrounded myself with very grounded people. And, and I realize now, you know, I've had a lot of folks reach out to me, say, um, my husband's just not into this. My wife is just not into this. And you yes. have to, I, what I, and I mean, you, we've talked about this. Tiffany, I've talked about this. Um, my co our, my co co-host before it, I believe that it, there are people here to anchor and to support and ground us mm -hmm. so that we don't, yes. I've always thought of myself as a balloon, a balloon and they tether us mm -hmm. yeah, right. for well, sure. I mean, they do. And, and so does, you know, I'm, I am grounded by my children and routine and, and which I've always everyday responsibilities, right. life, life responsibilities, Laundry. getting them to baseball, whatever, feeding them, all that yeah, they dogs. Eat. They want to eat. Yes, they do. So, so yeah. So I took the Reiki classes and then I decided to be honest and I live in an area w with a lot of folks that I judged were not in the same place I was not that I thought I was better than it's just that you know a lot of doctors and lawyers and that kind of thing and, and and I didn't want to tell people what I did because I didn't want to be judged and I didn't want to be goofy in the flake well you live in a very upscale community and people are professionals and they're very entrenched in the 3d world and they're very successful well by by that definition society standards, by yeah. society standards and so it takes a lot of courage to come out and say, actually, I think my perspective is, is this. And, and it's kind of way outside of their, their comfort zone. You want an example realm. of this? <laughs> I was at our gym, and this woman, she reminded me of my grandmother. She's just so cute and sweet. And, and so we were getting dressed, and um, I'm not sure why she started telling me, but her husband had passed away. And... And I was like, and he's standing right there, right behind you. I had and, a feeling you're going to say that. And she's a judge. Did and she I mean, freak out? It, no, she was really sweet. And, I, and whatever it is I said, I don't remember what I said, but I said something. And so gave her my phone number because she cried, gave her my phone number and she called me and I, and, and she did call. Uh -huh, and she so said, you, she, she felt the, his presence, I'm sure. Well, whatever it is I said, you said I mean, the right it, thing, it, struck it, a chord, struck something with her, yeah. whether, you know, whether I, I don't know. Um, and again, I don't know what I said because it, it wasn't me right and then we had lunch and I made my mom go with me 
And <laughs> she looks at my mom and she said, so are you psychic too? And I said, I'm not psychic. I don't know what you're, I'm not psychic. And this is before the triangle. And Right. And Except that you saw like, her dead husband. Yeah. Standing behind. But, and, you know. But it, it, I, can't, I can't control it. It's a hit or miss thing. Right. And um, a, a, anyway, so that was, that was a, a, a time. And one time I thought the guides were testing me, which I don't think they do that. And I was standing in Starbucks, and because I'd said I will pass along, because at this point I thought I'm going to be a medium. This is what I'm going to do, you know. Um, that if there's a message, I will pass it along, no matter how awkward. Oh this gets. gosh, Carrie, when you open that door, yeah, you so get into such uncomfortable situations. I felt this man's heart. I felt this. Oh like, gosh, this, this, and so I'm oh, walking gosh. to Starbucks. I'm like, I'm not going. I'm not. Going. I mean, I, I look like a crazy loon. Not wanting to be crazy, and here I am. I'm like, I'm not going to tell him. I'm just, I can't walk up to a stranger and say, by the way, how's your heart? And I'm like, fuck. Okay, fine. So I go back, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I've totally had this experience. I want to ask you something. This is really bizarre. <laughs> I have this whatever you want to call it, whatever. So tell me about your heart. Do you? And he's like, so. I mean, he's probably 70. And he's like, well, now that you're talking. And I said, no, 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 really. <laughs> tell me about your heart. And he's like, and then he just, like, he clicked into this. And he said, no, I just had a, a scam done, so I'm I'm fine. I said, okay, I just wanted to pass along a message and just whatever. So, so he received it. He received it, and who knows? But but I, I, and again, I don't think they, I don't think they does this. But there have been some weird things. But then random, I mean, but not random. They felt it's like you random. know you have to to say something. Well, you know that the, I the, fought with myself too, and then I'm like, who am I talking to? This is early on. Who are <laughs> I get you? a message. I'm not telling them that. But then I'd be like arguing in my in my head, like at least you're in your head. Yeah. But then I'm like, am I crazy? What so the? did you go tell him? I had to. You did. It was a neighbor. So every time I went by the house, I was getting these messages. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell How him. How did it turn out? Uh, well, okay. So I had this neighbor, and and I and I kept feeling that he was actually he was dying. Is what, it, what it, is what it felt like to me. And he just was sounding worse and worse and worse. Like, just like, it sounded like he was dying too. And I was supposed to go and tell him he needed to go and seek medical attention because he wasn't. He was in denial. And I was very new to this. This is like a few years ago. I, I you know, the closest I got to spirituality was like maybe an oracle card deck and turning a card every day. I mean, like, I was like, that's pretty cool. I mean, that was like nothing, right? And um, I kept ignoring it. And then it was like this this urgency, like every t- and I walk my baby. dog every day by this guy's house. I, he's my neighbor. So it got so intense. And I just flat out refused. And then all one night it was like, bothering me so much I couldn't sleep and it was like I if I want any peace I just have to say it I've never heard this story I never told you this story I'm just gonna have to say it and we had just moved into our place maybe it's four years ago yes Mm -hmm. and I said I'm just gonna have to he's gonna think I'm crazy I don't even know him but whatever I gotta do it or I'm never gonna sleep this this will not leave me alone this in feeling and so I did. I, I, I was walking by. He was in his garage. And I said, hey. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I know we don't know each other. But, um, you know, I get information sometimes about people. And I just feel really pressed, really pressed to tell you that there's something going on that needs your medical attention. I really feel like you should go and and see a doctor. I don't know what's, you know, going on this with you at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was really like that, really bad. Chain smoker, really bad. And then he disappeared for three months. Just I didn't him see him for three. No, he actually had gone and got treatment somewhere. It, it stayed with his sister. Before I don't know. That? I mean, was that no, the worst? like right after I talked to him, I think he did go to the doctor and he disappeared for like, maybe even four months he was just gone like I never saw him and see his partner but I I didn't know them I wasn't gonna go hey so how's how'd that turn out is that right yeah is he is he alive so um and then four months later he showed up he looked much better and I guess he had gone to stay with a relative and get help it was very interesting what kind of help I don't know I didn't I'm assuming it was I I didn't 
I don't know them, you know? It was just like, it was, I said. You get the pass. If you say something, no, you get to go back. No, no. I, I, I passed the message on. I, fi- I could get to sleep. I didn't have that crazy feeling every time I walked by. I, I unburdened. I unburdened myself. I passed Curiosity it on. would kill me. I, I mean, I knew, he, some, you, you know, he Can went we and got treatment and flowers? for whatever it was, and he's still alive today. So. Awesome. You could have, you may have. I, I don't know. His life. I don't know. I was just, that was my first exposure to having something so pressing me so urgently for so long. Like, I was just in denial, like, I'm not doing that. They're going to think I'm nuts. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I digress. I didn't mean to No, 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 story. I love that story. No, I'm just, I'm just saying it in my head. I am. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. My story's dragging on too long. Anyway, okay. you found your tribe. You found your community. Yeah, I was honest. Came out, mother-in-law, a uh, uh, room mom, and for one of my kids, we're at the zoo, and I said, "She said, so what did you do this weekend? I took a Reiki class. Oh, do you know so and so? Yes, she was in my class out of the thousands random, of going every weekend. Random, but not random. Only three people in that class, and one of them was her friend. And so then I get invited to her house, and Tiffany's there, and who I went to high school with, and we didn't know it at the time. So we just all became friends, and we bead and talk and run energy on each other, and and then one day, 4 a.m., I woke up podcasting you need a podcast and I'd had a medium years ago tell me a couple years before that or maybe right before that say people are going to come to your kitchen table for answers I'm like what answers do I have (laughs) (laughs) and um and so then and I I hadn't put that in context and Mm -hmm. so then you know months later year after that whatever um I woke up with podcasting I'm a mom three kids husband travels a lot I mean what do I know about podcasting so then a month after that, Tiffany calls and says, hey, this rock station in Houston that was a big deal, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, the guys that started this particular show was starting an online show and or an online channel like NASA is one of their clients. I mean, they, they all this stuff, they were like, we need content. Do you guys want a show? So we were in the studio for two years, and I remember everything was, oh, we're going to talk about dead people. And then it was like second year, third year, and then it was okay. So astral traveling out there, you meet aliens. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So you went all the way from not talking about a spirit very quietly to like, yeah. So what do you think about ETs? And you know, so you guys really kind of ran the gamut. And what I loved about it is, I think your viewership kind of grew with you. Mm-hmm. You know, they they kind of got in at the ground level and then then expanded. But You're great viewers. Not only. Was the show great for kind of cracking people open? Check it out, the Joyride Show. Um, mm-hmm. I know all the recordings are still on YouTube, mm-hmm. and they're still out there. But you went through an incredible, um, I guess I would call it an awakening or a, an yeah. incredible journey. Well, it's an acceptance. You became s- so um, aligned, I feel, with your guides and you are so on point. I mean, you, you clearly read energy. You have so many gifts, too many to mention here, um, abilities and gifts and intuition. But your growth has been exponential over the last few years. And I was wondering if you could speak to that. What has it been like to navigate that and keep a foot in both worlds? That's a great question. That's a really, really well stated question. You know, it's interesting because, uh, as I was telling you before, I don't. When it's you, you don't see it. You mm-hmm. know, it's like seeing the what color your own eyes are. I, I don't see it, mm-hmm. and so it, it. I get clues here and there. Um, you know, it, it is. I've learned to compartmentalize. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really thought that I had to share everything with everyone, um, and and so as far as keeping a foot in both worlds, it it is. It, it actually, it's more about bringing, because I think that that's real life. I think what we're doing right here is a holographic school, mm-hmm. and it's beautiful, and it's wonderful. I think it's a lot more than that. I think that, I think that um, anyway, I, I can go really far with that, but it's, um, and but I think that it's about bringing the abilities into your everyday life. It, 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 I Incorporating what you're learning into mm-hmm. your way of being yeah and i don't maybe. try to incorporate it it's just that you it's a kind of an organic process mm-hmm. sure and that's yeah. that's um and it's how you look at things 
it is such a calling just the exploration that I can't like you said I, I can't not do it it's like saying um a football player a sport guy isn't going you know it's going to drop all sports it's not going to happen I, mean, I also it, think once you see and know you things you can't unsee it no. and that's and I, and I grapple so. with that though I mean it, it is I'd gone down the rabbit hole um at one point with conspiracy theories I, I've always had the ability to see patterns, patterns. and I've always rejected institutionalized anything I mean, even as a, uh, I was questioning a preacher when I, a Baptist preacher when I was 11 years old. Oh, God. I'm but sure that didn't end well. Why? You know, and, and my <laughs> why, and that's when I was always told that you're not, you're not supposed to ask why. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting in a, lo- in a, in a bookstore. And so, so, okay, so here, here it is. If you want to hear, okay, so I went, I, I had the beautiful gift of being able to see the new earth or whatever you want to call it, different dimension. Um. So I, after the arm thing, and I started looking at, oh my gosh, so they tell us to eat this food, and then we get sick, and then they pump us full of meds, and, you know, and it, and, it, and I felt like I kind of saw behind the curtain, mm-hmm. and, um, and it did not feel good, but I, you know, I didn't, anyway, so one day I'm sitting at the bookstore, and I open up David Icke's book, and, and his stuff doesn't resonate with me at all, but I was curious, and, and I opened it up to this point and it was said something like the Bilderberg Group back in the 1960s met with Monsanto. Um, Bilderberg Group, for those of you who aren't aware of it, it's a real group, and it's it's um, a lot of the heads of states, presidents, um, bankers, institutions, and they get together and they kind of say, okay, what's going on in the world? What's happening? What's um, but then there's the conspiracy side, which is that they're actually it's a negative force, and and it's anyway. So so. On one side, the benevolent, um, we're have, we have this mass population growth. How are we going to feed them? You know, food will become an issue um, in you know, 30 years, 20 years. And so that's where they... This is in the 60s? Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's where they came up with this idea of genetically modified food. And I don't know if I have this right. This is what I remember reading mm-hmm. in his book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, that's where that started. And and then it was, and, and the way it's always worked for me is this stone lights up, this stone lights up, and my path just, I just follow my path. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if I don't, I get pushed on my path. But right. it's, 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 it's one thing because I, I was told. Those breadcrumbs are very neatly placed in front of you, right? They are. Those and, crumbs. But they said if you knew where the crumbs led, you wouldn't go. Right. But it, <laughs> That's but for sure. you go with your path. I mean, right. really, truly. And, yeah. And, it's not, you kind of are spoon-fed just what you can handle you know and then you open up a little bit and they're like okay we can increase what we're dropping in a little bit more a little more but don't you know they're probably going oh my god just stop thinking stop resisting but so anyway so then (laughs) not too long after that i thought oh so i eat this food i get sick you know pollution Mm -hmm. food alcohol. it all starts making sense (laughs) and then i'm well, a pump full of drugs, and then mm-hmm. I, you know, and, and I just remember thinking, ooh, I don't want that. And so we went raw vegan for three weeks, and that was really hard. I didn't <laughs> wow, research, that's just, extreme. How did the kids know, take it? Forks, forks Over Dives, I made them watch it with me, and it's a great okay. documentary, and I loved it because it's not like, you can't do this, you can't do that. I like that you gave them exposure and said, what do you guys think about this? Oh, they have to be on board. I have yeah. three alphas, and they yeah. they are like a pack of wild dogs. They'll take it down. <laughs> So I, I do. I have three kids, and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. They're fun most days. But um, anyway, so so I. So you had all this awareness. Well, yeah. Coming online. But then I'm I'm, and this is again very beginning, and I have this dream, and and I don't know if you've been here yet for a hurricane in Houston. I missed the last big one. I was in Boston. Oh, I remember. On that. vacation. I remember that, and then I don't think you could get back in. No, I was stuck so out poor there. You. <laughs> for you so it's like we all wait we know it's coming everybody's watching the news you're People holding your breath work everybody's yeah. getting water right. everybody's you know right. it's like every it's a standstill it's kind of fun right in a dark way right but um and so in my dream that's what this was and it was oh my goodness it was like i saw detail and usually i don't dream in detail it, so was, it was a very was, lucid dream was, for you it was and and so and then um, i'm out west a friend of mine was at the house he leaves leaves his phone um, I decided to come home. So the kids and my husband and I get in the car and we're driving to the grocery store. And I just remember something was supposed to happen. It's just something big was supposed to happen and nobody was working that day. And, and so we're driving and I, I remember seeing a chip 
potato chip bag roll by like trash. And all of a sudden, we did this, this, I had this feeling of flipping off the summer a salt. Board. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, but it was a great feeling. It's like, oh, I guess we're going. And where, I don't know. And, and this is in my dream. And so the, um, this woman meets me, Judy Dench. That's what I always say. She had, she had short, she's wearing I a can robe, picture her right now hair, in my mind. Beautiful. And she said, do you know where you are? And in the meantime, my children get up and run into the room. And my husband, sweet husband, this is when they were up, you know, crack, crack it on. My, my husband said, you know, go back to sleep. I, got, I, I have the boys. Okay, great. In so, real life. In real life. So yeah. I go back to sleep, go right back in. Mm-hmm. And she's waiting for me. And she said, do you know where you are? She's, and, and I said, no. She's like, well, you peek behind the curtain. And she said, we have taken people off. And she said, um, basically, that things had gotten so out of balance. And she showed me, like, the world, uh, the earth, and then kind of got oozy stuff on top of it. Mm-hmm. And and she said, so we've, we've pulled people off. And, and, um, and she said, do you have any questions? Oh, furball. She's like, do you have any questions? And, and I said, well, yeah, do I have a house? She's like, of course you have a house. And, and my whole family came with me. So you're in like a new reality. Oh, it was sparkly air. I mean, it's like it was so clean. A higher dimensional it reality. Like Earth. It's a higher dimensional Earth, maybe. Yeah. I and don't know. So, I'm guessing. No, no. I, I mean, it, it. I didn't know. It was just a really cool dream. And then she said, um, do you think... Sorry. Carrie's cat is hacking up a hairball. Yeah. If you hear anything. That's oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> got it. Sorry to distract so. you. Go ahead. <laughs> they're, 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 yeah, oh gosh! Animals. But so then she tells me that, um, and I said, "Does my husband have a job?" And he's an attorney, but he's an intellectual property attorney with in- engineering background. She said, "Yes, but people don't steal ideas here, so he can." Um, it's a different be, type of work, right? And he, she said, "We see with the, the same planet. skill set." Yes, probably. And she said, we, "We see the planet with different ideas," and. Um, and so apparently that's part of what he would do. And I said, ah, good question. Government. Is there a government? She said, not like you have. There's What's cool is you got to ask these questions. I know. I wish I would have asked better ones. But it, well, but she's like, there's a council. I bet you can go back in. I was I was thinking about that. Like, yeah. if I connected once, can I connect again? Absolutely. So, but I didn't know what it was. I woke up. I thought it was really cool. Whatever. And so then I came across Dolores Cannon, and she talked about the new earth. But it kind of scared me. I mean, it was really bizarre, and it kind of freaked me out. And, oh, 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 funny thing. So the iPhone, where that plays in, I said, so is everybody going? She said, yes, eventually everybody will go. And she said, you can track. And I'd asked about a neighbor or a friend. She's like, you can track them. Like, apparently there was an app. <laughs> you can track what? and see where people are. And um, it was really bizarre. An Ascension app? An Ascension app. Oh, they didn't make it yet. They're waiting for the next train. <laughs> they're not here yet, but they're coming. They're coming. They're on their way. Good to know. But then Charles and I watched. We were watching... Uh, an HBO show, and they had an ad for a new movie, a new um, show called Leftovers, Left Behind, Taker, something mm-hmm. like that. I'm like, that's like my dream. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And so and now I've realized that it's – Those it, confirmations are really powerful. Well, and I didn't know come. it at the time. Of course not. I mean, but, it was, but But that's the seed planted, and mm-hmm. then it – you're still talking about it. clearly had a huge impact it on did. you. And, well, I think and it's then the new earth. As you go forward, you start to make sense of what you've been fed, spoon-fed in the – that's it. Is that they're like, okay, here's the a pieces. Piece. Yeah. Here's another one. And you're like, but I'm still kind of on together. trying to put all uh, my edges are all together and I'm filling it in. Mine are filling in the grid. Together. I mean, mine, mine truly are filling in my grid. Well, and then it scares me. I'm like, wait, did I get that right? You know, did I get that right? I think we all question ourselves, you know, and I think um, a huge part of this process is learning to trust ourselves and kind of fine tune our discernment. Because there's all kinds of information coming at us, and there's all kinds of energies coming at us, and our discernment around what's, mine, what's, what's aligned and mm-hmm. what is ours and what you know keeps us on our path is really where we need to focus. But it's so easy to get kind of pulled off. So discernment is huge. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this into my reality because that aligns with my vibration. Right. This not so much. This theory. This kind of news this kind of whatever well in recognizing it no right. and I'll just like let that go and it just you know it's so interesting it just falls away and it's just not part of my reality until someone 
brings up something. Give me an example. Like we were just talking and you were talking about indictments or things coming around for this in person who's involved in sex trafficking trafficking or yeah. whatever whatever okay that's not even on my radar but oh you mentioned it i'm like interesting you know you keep on with but it's well, not part of my day-to-day life that's what i had to i had to realize that I, I i had to um and it was actually jesus that that one day every now and then i, I at the time i could connect to him and he's like you're swimming because i was really the conspiracy stuff is such a slippery slope because you question your reality. You question your reality completely. And I don't mm-hmm. trust this. I don't trust that. I don't trust doctors. I don't trust our government. I don't trust our police. I don't trust anything. You go re- pretty deep into fear. Incredibly deep. And you get Which is so very slimed. lower vibrational. There you, you are, go. The slime. Yes. And I think that's very controlling. But it, it is. And finally, he was like, dude, you're swimming in this Get stuff. out of it. And you're you're just being like you're. You're, you're getting you're, slimed. Right. And I am not. I realize, you know, uh, there are people that are. They shield up and they battle and they battle the dark and they battle this stuff and and they're built for it. I'm not. I'm mm-hmm. I'm a light bearer. I, I I bring in the candle that hopefully helps light the way for people that want to go that way. Mm-hmm. And I've also learned I don't say this is what it is. It's what if? Mm-hmm. What if? Mm-hmm. You know, let's just play with these ideas. I mean, what if? And and if it fits, great. If it doesn't, great. And it's not that I won't commit to it or commit to the idea out of fear. Though. I did. I was telling you that I, I just read this. I, sh- I, I showed it to you uh, close to 20, no, probably 15 years ago. I did this personalysis test. It was uh, my husband. It was so it was spot client, on. So crazy. And, and apparently I did. I don't remember doing it, but I, I did all of these. I did, you know, you answer all these questions and it tells you. It's amazing you are, how they create these oh, I know. profiles who that are so accurate. Would come to adapt, who you, you know, what do you do when you get stressed? The number one thing it said for me for fear ironically is uh going against what people their beliefs they hold firmly oh my god like, that's that's and I'm your doing. whole role is to completely sh- you know show a different perspective right create a new pathway shine a light and it's completely outside of that framework uh, yeah totally good, good luck well, I, I think I'm the reason kidding. they showed it to me is I've been saying, who am I? Who am I? And, and I right. think they're saying, okay, look, this is where, where you're stuck. This is how, how you're wired. You have to un, untangle that little knot. And so. Um, That'll be a huge piece. I know. I know. We're not quite there. But I am. I you are stepping right. out. Oh, yeah. I am stepping out. But I haven't. Your <laughs> ideas I are really say. thought-provoking. And I love your mm-hmm. blog. She has a blog. I write more. I have I'm going to put a link to your blog. Thank you. In the comments so that people can access your writing. I love your writing. Well, I appreciate that. I have a lot, but then I put a, (laughs) what I get for putting a, you know, like putting a lock on your, your diary. I put a password on my online. And then you forgot. I can't figure it out. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Maybe at the right time it'll, it'll, you'll get the download. It'll be like, oh yeah. And and you'll unlock all this content and it'll spur you on. Well, that, that's hopefully going to happen. Yeah, I know. It it was like. There must be a reset thing. (laughs) I don't know. It's like, what is the You're hint? So the neighbor next door. <laughs> Shit, what is that? Anyway. So oh, my gosh, really Carrie. Fun. That's hilarious. Really you have to get on the other side of fear. Mm-hmm. You have got to get on the other side of fear to unlock your potential, to unlock your truth, to become who you're meant to be. And align, and align with your highest potential. I mean, I'm not saying you in particular. I mean, in yeah, general, the general yeah, yeah. fear is such a well, has such, such a, a hold on people. Such a paralyzer. And that's so. We did this. Um, we we're on this panel. She's a great speaker, by the way. Um, we we're on this <laughs> yes. panel in California, yeah. and I was on my way back, and I had my ticket. You know, I'm on the plane. I'm looking for my seat, and I know I'm I'm a window aisle, and I'm I mean I, I have it in front of me. And I, oh, there it is. And I sit down and I'm sitting next to this gentleman, lovely, lovely man. And we're talking and I, and I learned so much and, and it was so thought provoking, thought provoking. And I don't want to go into his stuff, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, but what I walked away with is this number one, I was in the wrong seat. I was supposed to be, I can't believe nobody came and said, Hey, you're in my seat. Mm -hmm. Number one, that's random, but not random, Mm -hmm. right? You were supposed to be right next to that person. Yeah. Lovely. So. 
and it, but what I realized is that it was so obvious the the difference between living life in fear versus like making choices from fear, and we don't even see it. It's so s- subtle. Mm-hmm. So, for example, it's so pervasive. I have too. a good. Fr- I, the reason I brought up that story is that is that I, I as this man is telling me these things, I realized, and this is what I expressed to him, is that he is making choices to avoid pain and to avoid his worst case. So mm. for example, if I don't do this, that might happen. It's not that, hey, I want to go do this over here. It's, uh, let me give you an example. So if I don't watch what I eat, I will get cancer and die. Versus, I love vegetables. I love the stuff. I love that. Um, I want to create my highest potential for a long and healthy life, right. so I'm going to eat this way. Right. So and that's I enjoy that's it. a more enlightened approach versus the fear, which is, you know, fear always kind of has you running with a gun to your head. Oh, what a great! You need to. Do you not? Did you make that up? Yeah, I just I'm came up write with it down. that. This when you put it on the shirt. Okay, fear. <laughs> okay, keep talking. Yeah. Yeah. Keep so talking. anyway, fear is pr- so pervasive yet subtle, that we almost don't even recognize when we're responding to life from a place of fear. And I'm realizing that a huge part of my message is to get people to recognize fear and shift that mindset because fear is so lower vibrational. I'm all about energy, right? Right. It's like strapping cement boots on your feet and going for a swim. Don't do it. But you're like, but I can, but I can. Or, you I know, mean, I mean, it really it is. It's it's that it's that um, paralyzing. It is that much of a problem. It will sink you. It will. And and, and to give you uh, and to me, this was just a, an easy example. Do you run because you want to look better? Because you want to get that partner and you want to look great naked and you want, or you don't want to die, you know, because right. you, you you want you need you you need to exercise. Mm-hmm. That was a bad one, but or do you run because you enjoy running? You know, do you swim because you enjoy swimming? And yes, I mean yes, there are some days that we have to just do it. But it it, it is it is where are you making those choices? Um, and then some people and like, are you would, living your life? I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, no, no. but are you living your life because you are so worried about what everyone else is going to think? If you make a career change, if you fail, if you become an artist instead of stay in your corporate job, are you living your life because mm-hmm. you are trying to fit in a box that someone else, the expectations of someone else has placed you in? Or are you living your life because this is what you authentically feel your purpose is and what you're called to? Okay. That's a huge question to ask yourself, people. It is. We'll let that sink in. It's huge. So last night I met this, I met this, um, so we went to the baseball game, Astros game. The last one. In my 11th I love, inning. I love the stadium. The they, made. so I met this, he's a clerk, very sweet, sweet, he's my boy, he's a man. And he said that he worked for two years doing, he was an engineer doing what he thought he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, I, I kind of hate this. But it wasn't, I hate this wine, wine. It was, I really thought, my parents are engineers, I really thought this is what I, what I was going to do. And he said that he had lunch. I said, "Tell me about that moment. Tell me when about you that realized moment you decided to go to yeah. law school." And and he's going to a very good law school, and he's clerking with a really great firm. And and but I'm, I was really curious about that. And he said, "Funny you should ask that." He said, "I was I had lunch with a, a childhood of friend." Of course, of mine. he remembers the exact moment. Of course, he does. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got chills. So yeah. there's something about this. He said, "I, I had lunch with a with a, a, a childhood friend of mine," and she said, "What did you want to be when you were growing up?" He said, "I wanted to be a lawyer." He's like, oh my God, I totally forgot. I wanted to be a Oh my gosh. <laughs> and he did it. He, he decided to go back to school. For and you know what? He's going to be an amazing lawyer because oh, yeah. that's what is calling to him. And then I reminded him that, you know what? There may be a day that you decide that you want to buy a business, but then you've got all of these great, you've got this engineering background, you've got this, you know, legal background. And you know the excuses. That's fear. I can't, I can't do it. I can't because what will people think? Or I can't because I already... You know, I have a mortgage, I have I, a wife, I have yeah, children. Every, the, everybody has those fears and those excuses well, as to why. Right. Fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of whatever fear of it success. is. Fear of success. Fear of success is a That's huge a one. one. It, but it's huge and it's so prevalent, right? Fear of success. Oh, I've battled that. I have too. 
I have absolutely had had to work through that. Well, and and then there's there's so many we could go so many directions with this, but the bottom line is fuck beer. Sorry. Okay, sure, we'll go with that. But <laughs> the bottom line is we need to really real we we need to realize that we came into this life to do something very specific and for some people that could just be walking through the world as themselves for everybody it's that yes okay yes for everybody but I'm saying you know people have this grandiose idea that they need to be something what's my life purpose who am I what am I supposed to be doing you're supposed to be you you are supposed to be you, the fullest expression of you, the most beautiful expression of you, the highest and best version of you. And but we're not taught what that is. We're not taught how to explore We have to that find space. that, right? And, and we have and to sit with ourselves. We have to sit with ourselves to find out who are we. I didn't even know who I was. Right. I was such a master at being, I could, being you, the illusion. I could put a mask. I was a chameleon, man. So was I. I was good at it. I was whoever I was with. Yes, I was such a good chameleon that I didn't even know I was a chameleon. You're chameleon to yourself. I chameleon to myself. Yeah. And you know what? When I kind of finally found my groove and found my voice and found myself and aligned with my higher selves and got in, firmly in my lane, my husband was like, I don't even know who you are. Ooh, but I love you. Go put a red wig on. I don't know if he was that excited, but he was like, I, I don't even know who you are. I said, yeah. I mean, he was so used to me being this other person. Well, being a pleaser, I'm sure. Very a much a pleaser, pleaser, perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Yes. Type A, you know. And it was so interesting that once I figured out who I was to see people either align or fall away. Right. And, like, and it away. was like fast. Well, that's really fast and then you said it very eloquently I, I, my thing is if I fly my freak flag it allows everybody else to too and yeah. some people I'm going to resonate with and some I'm not some people are going to be, rep- be repelled by me that's mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. you know yeah the critics boy they're out there and you know what that's okay if you don't align with their message if you don't align with what we're seeing you know change the channel there's a million people who are promoting whatever you believe you know so, so. that's been the really fun thing is that we don't get the haters. We just don't on our channel. I mean, it, 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 I, by and large, 98% of the people are lovely. Uh, they have lovely comments. And, mm-hmm. and there was one fella, and I felt into him. And I love grousey people. I love people that other people find very gruff. You alchemize the situation. I just love, I, because to me, they're being them. And they're so, it's like it's a wall. Right. And they're going, Arr! Well, really, they're really kind un- un- underneath, but if you don't see it, you you're saw never that, see which it. is so powerful. Well, I, I, you my, leaned my in. My father can be like that. I mean, who, who, and you it's have like, some experience. If you're buying this bullshit, then you're, he's not for you, you know, because he's a wonderful man. Anyway, yeah. so, so this, this, this fellow wrote in and, and ha- I mean, just a little snarky. He ended up being our, like our biggest bulldog. I mean, he was really so much fun. Oh my and gosh, he was, and he, I that just is hear so him awesome. Like, Carrie got me. She got me. She figured <laughs> it out. But I'm going to throw up the most obnoxious things. That's so funny. And it was a transmutation. Transmutation. But I also, I, I, I love that. I, and I, I cannot, I cannot go away from the show without saying that. Um, and I'm really not trying to plug what you do, but I want to tell you how I met this fabulous human being. It. it so I had. I'd been reading at the time a lot of cryon, and we're talking about DNA and our DNA being turned on, and we have all this junk DNA, and some of it really is junk DNA, um, but a lot of it is DNA that they just don't know what it is, and or what it's supposed to do. It was dormant. Yeah, and so I and I I asked the guys because they'll give you what you want. You just have to recognize it when it comes. And I said I want, I want to be in my fullest capacity. I want to be the superhuman that I think we all pretty much are, and. Um, and, and it's possible. I mean, and I, I very much like, kind of said that prayer with a, you know, I sent that message out with like loud and clear, well, like a like a rocket booster strapped to it. And I'm not kidding. One day, two days after that, I think one day, I get this email, and 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 Wendy had sent me this email, and and um, you're in Houston, and, and I, I all I remember is I got not even halfway through, I was crying, and I was, it was <laughs> this is 
what I asked for right here. And so I, I didn't even finish the email. I wish I would have kept it. Um, it's in an old inbox. It's somewhere out there in cyberspace. And so I called you and you're like, okay, you know, you can come in for a no touch, which is sort of the light version. And I'm like, nope, mm -mm, recalibration. I it's Marconics yes. is what we're talking about. And Carrie well, if they watch your show, they got recalibrated, and which was and awesome. She kept saying, well, but if you want, um, why don't you just come in? And I'm like, mm -mm. No, I want the full meal deal. And um, I want the DNA upgrades. I want it. And, and it was fascinating because I think it did a couple of different things. I think that, number one, I think people that are drawn to your work are ready and they're being guided. And it's yes. like, okay, sh get out of the matrix. You know, let's, yes. let's, 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 let's do something with this. And so it's not just, oh, higher vibrating. It is. Be no, ready. It's Be ready. It's powerful. It, because a lot of the stuff yeah. falls away. A lot of, it's not just it, it turns stuff on, but it also allows the scales to fall away, so to speak. And it allows the, uh, I think, I think the veils are very much thinning and it allows you to be able to access and, and see through the veils easier. It, it, it's something. You get in plugged there. in in a way that no other modality that I know of can plug you in. Mm -hmm. This is a soul ascension modality and let me tell you what I think that looks like and this is my perspective only um, when you know there are, there are a lot of and if you're watching this and if you're still with us yay thanks um, <laughs> but um, there are a lot of uh, ascension topics and it's yes. ascension things and and so I've, I've asked I've asked my team I asked Bob about this I have this new guy that came online around Christmas and an ascension from what I understand isn't it isn't just fairy la la land that we're going to it is it is it's like what my what bob said is he said you know we are there are these younger realms planets and um and and what happens is we allow uh darker negative influences to come in and play around and they do and they and they they travel around uh, like different planets and mm -hmm. because it gives us the duality contrast we need duality right duality. there are a lot of places i mean if i can read you just by looking at you then there is no duality because we're all honest and and there's no such thing as honesty because we're all in that state of kind of oneness and so but we're in a place where there isn't oneness that i mean it, yes there is but we're here to experience separation so all of these in play and so they so they said it's time for you to take a seat at the grown-ups table so that is why we're firing everything up. It's time. It's it, it, it's time for us to elevate to the next. Place. Like that duality has served its purpose. Mm -hmm. Release so. your stuff, which means release your history, release your attachment to the trauma, release well, release the story, release the story, and story. step fully into who you came here to be. Like we've we've experienced that darkness, and now it allows you to come and step into. Well, it made us richer and fuller right but at the same time for me this is like the thing ascension means we don't have to die and come back ascension exactly. means there's a I, the, this is how, how I saw it and there was a great cartoon Coco who illustrated that beautifully I love it, it was such a incredibly visual that was an amazing show. show but I see the earth and I see this web walk right around it and we bounce back and forth reincarnation we bounce back and forth mm -hmm. and we just go back and forth and back and forth and we don't go for much further out there it's almost like the the matrix it the was earth literally matrix, three four three four three four three d back, 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 back. and yes. so that's what when you're and you medium, could only transition that way right and so then what happens is um, what my team has said is that once you realize what the rules are, you don't have to do it anymore. Think the matrix. N what's his face? Neo. Once he realized, oh, I can't actually f jump across that building Multiply and not die. Multiply myself. Exactly. And so expand. And, and that's what. So you get out of that matrix. You get out of the secondary matrix, and you can go beyond. And and that is Marconics very much is a tool to help. If your soul is calling and if your soul is ready for that, it, it and it doesn't do it for you, by the way. You're not all of a sudden going to wake up and go, oh, wow. No. It, that's not it. it. It it allows you, it's like it takes it allows the you the expansion. Off the car. It right. allows you the expansion 
energetically, vibrationally, mm -hmm. to, you know, have your consciousness expand, to hold higher dimensional aspects of yourself so your higher selves can come in and integrate. Because when you're in a closed Taurus, like the regular human has a closed auric field, you're, you're limited by that right. closed field. Your governors are on. You know, okay. your energy is just circulating, but you, there's no expansion. You are in a very finite container. So the Taurus is the one that looks like the donut inverted kind of. It, like, you, you yes. just, it sits and just goes around and it's around. Cycle. It's like recycled. Yes. When you do a recalibration, we completely open that. You're no longer in a closed, finite Taurus. The energetic auric field is opened so much, you can hold higher aspects of yourself, higher selves. The vibration is so much higher and so, so much more expansive. They cannot integrate into a small, fixed space. You need to be expanded in consciousness and energetically to be able to hold that. As you expand, you're getting more higher selves accessible to you to come in and guide you. And there's that bleed through your awareness of higher dimensional realities right. and experiences and guidance is going to be available. Well, and that's, but that's where the real work begins, though, because it's right. sort of like saying, okay, guess what? You're really a billionaire, but you're the one that has to quit acting like a pauper, you know? And it's, it's, you, it takes it. And that's why I think the people that come to you are ready for that because there's a lot of inner work that. that's involved mm -hmm. and evolution. It's like I'm giving you the keys right. to the Porsche. But you have to learn how to drive. You got to drive it out of the driveway and go somewhere. If you're going to sit there and idle, which, every, Which is fine. Wrong. Yes, that's personal choice. But it's then there's shame. Yeah, but you know? then there's people who are going to back that sucker out and go. And where they go is like so incredible. It it's really is. It really it, it is. It is so much fun. And and I, I anyway. So well, I just, thank you for the conversation about Marconics. Well, that wasn't no, on the agenda, but no, it appreciate wasn't. you talking about but that. But I think it's been you know you'd ask me about my my path, and I think that it has been. Um, an integral part so much so that I don't see it. I mean, I see the results of it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, um, anyway. So what I've seen for time. Carrie is an incredible connection and alignment with her higher selves. Com it was like the channel was just opened and you were open to that yeah. communication. Not always. You've resisted in the past, that's for sure. But you get so much information. You learn so much from yourself because they're higher aspects of you. Well, and that's and that's bringing information down. You're not going to get more pure information than from your higher aspects of self I, or you. I think that is so true, and I think that like uh, this guy Bob is like, okay, we need to do some work, and he's wonderful at teaching me, teaching me, and and, and he'll go through. So it's my guides that are. And now uh, that are that are teaching me, and mm -hmm. it's not and, and it's, it's not, not external. To go it's else. not external. And and, and I've done it. I mean, James Van yeah. Prague. I, I you know I signed up, paid a thousand bucks for his online course. That's and part of the process, it right? Is, is it the is. external seeking, and then you come back to yourself and you realize, oh, I can just tap in, and right. I can get the information that I need, and and allowing it, and trusting it, right? And using discernment around it is part of the journey, right? It is part of the journey. And that, that, and it's not always easy. And it is easier to go to somebody that you trust and say, "Hey, what do you think?" And, but at the end of the day, it's like asking for advice from someone you don't know very well, like a stranger, right? And and, saying, and the information's coming through their filters, mm -hmm. I've always and their way. life experience and their fears or and whatever. If they're not having a good day. It's going to show up. And and mm -hmm. mediumship is so beautiful. And for me, it is the it is the on ramp. It is the guess what. Most people that go to mediums are seeking f for a painful reason. Lost a parent, lost a pet, lost something. Mm -hmm. And then, and it's such a hit when you realize, holy shit, this person's real. You know, and it's like, all of a sudden, you, you have the governor's off for just a moment of, I can, you know, there is really God. You know, most people, at least in my experience. Or even life after death. I hope so. I mean, I have faith and I go to church and at the end of the day, it's, I sure should hope this is real, you know, because we don't know, but that's what faith is. But when you have seen it and you're able 
the mediumship stuff is just where it begins. I mean, that again is just the only It's like cracking the door open. Mm -hmm. There's a whole world out there beyond it. There is. There really is. <laughs> it is a world of zoom. Which is accessible to every single person. Mm -hmm. But that's ascension right there. It's yes. knowing who you are. Yes. And, I, and I'll tell you one last, one last little story. So one night I was, I was, um, I've seen craft in the sky and one night I was laying in my backyard with my five stars visible because of the light pollution. I live down inside Houston and I'm <laughs> laying there and I'm, I, I, whatever reason I'm crying and it's just like, no, I wasn't crying yet. I was like, you know, cause I've been asking, why do we have to go through this veil of forgetfulness? Why? I mean, what is the point to this? And, and I, I know what the point is to on a logical standpoint, but and I was like, wait a minute. Okay. So, so if, and I knew I tapped into somebody. I knew I tapped into somebody up there. Mm -hmm. And um, and the way they come in for me is they come in like a shooting star, and then they move around. Like the craft doesn't do, like, it doesn't have like a planned course, a charted course. It, it moves. And so, mm -hmm. but it always comes in like a shooting star. And I told Sarah, a friend of ours, um, we're all um, looking at the sky one night, and I was like, I, want, I wish it was like a shooting star. And then it did. And so from then in, from then on, it comes in like a shooting star. So I'm laying there and I'm, and I'm like, why, you know, why do we have to forget? And it's like, okay, wait a minute. So let's just say, and I'm not, I have a beautiful family. Um, but let's just say I'm born into this family and the way we are as humans, in order to survive, you have to acclimate to the family you're in, good or bad. And so, and then hopefully you go out of, I mean, I even want my children to go out and question and, and, you know, find their own I've way said. exactly mm -hmm. and then you go out and you know and we find pain and because we're so separate from each other like I'm trusting my husband loves me I'm trusting that I'm interpreting things the right way and you know and then you get hurt and you get all this stuff you know your family hurts people people do get hurt and mm -hmm. and yet we still find love and we still find we still find our way back to love and how cool is that I'm like I get it and then all of a sudden this shooting star big wink <laughs> And then it starts cruising around like, there's my family. There was yeah. your confirmation, right? Well, and that's, I mean, that's like, Super we're cool. saying that there's more. There is so much so more. So much more. And they're all there. And it's not to be feared. No, but discernment is the key. Yes. Don't plug into anything. You yes. Know, unless you know what you're plugging into. Yes. But part of the journey of awakening is learning to trust yourself and energetically feel. Feel. You so how do you feel it's it? It's a feel. It's a feeling in my core and it's a feeling in my heart no, it's I like a know. yes it's like a yes when it's a solid yes it's like it it hits me like a solid yes in my being it's not a thought well and that's another thing to clue it's, a it's, it, it's a feeling it is a feeling because you're you have to turn your brain off really I yeah mean, i think a lot of us are starting to turn our brains off and going with our heart and and our mm -hmm. emotional bodies heart-based living it's kind of like that's where your alignment is that's that's your that's your gps your mind is going to talk you out of everything. Mm -hmm. It's going to create doubt, fear. It's going to send you in a loop that you can't get out, and, and it's a groove you can't get out of. Right. If you stay in your mind, you have got to drop into your heart well, and, and get comfortable with opening your heart and feeling things. Well, and that's what I've always said. Your brain is only full of what you've had experience. It's more conditioning lifetime. programming, right? Conditioning right. and programming. But your heart is goes across all the chapters mm -hmm. of this soul's experience. The full spectrum. Right. And and I think that it is oh, something you just said really sparked something. I don't know. I can talk for hours, so we probably Well, keep going. We'll we'll finish this. We'll, we'll keep going. We have a few minutes left. We're talking about um oh, Ashley from the E Seti Ranch. She doesn't have a last name. She's been on our show. She's one of the most incredible human beings I know. She was saying, I called her one day. Um, I actually had a session with her, and and I was working through a big breakup, and and mm -hmm. not husband, but um, a friend of mine at the time. And 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 she said, "Where do you feel it in your body?" And I never thought of it that way. It's like, okay, where, like when, like, like if you're not sure about something or a situation or someone, where are you feeling that? Because if you can start to identify where you feel things it'll tell you things like you'll recognize mm -hmm. it the next time mm -hmm. so oh i felt that before in my back pain left and 
it's related to that situation or with your emotional body. You know, are you feeling it in your solar plexus or you feeling where are you feeling it? Mm -hmm. And ooh, that's my sign. That's my key to know that there's some shady shit going on. And it so it really is that helps to get that discernment well, GPS your, going well, and alignment. That's what it is. It, it is your roadmap. Mm -hmm. And you have your own roadmap. So if you feel it in your third eye and you constantly feel something tapping on your third eye, that might be them saying, hello. You know, we're Wake trying to get up. your attention. Connect. It doesn't have to get bad. So anyway. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow, Carrie, Thank this has been this. so awesome. Thank this you for, awesome. for joining me. All this great thought-provoking content. I hope you uh, will come back again. I would love to come back we again. We have so much to talk about. You guys we don't do. even want to know hours go by. We do. But anyway, uh, to my audience, I want to thank you for joining us today for this uh, enlightening conversation. I hope you'll subscribe, like, and share with your friends if it resonated. Um, I love you all. And I hope you all have a beautiful day. Be kind to yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. We'll see you.